Amen. Isaiah 54, 17. We've all heard this scripture, but we're reading from the New Living Translation, the New Living Translation. It says this, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. Their vindication will come from me. I, the Lord, have spoken. Oh, a little blessing. To you reading and hearing of his holy divine word, the church say amen. amen. Uh, we're going to use for a topic on this service. Uh, no need to worry. No need to worry. No need to worry. Let's bow. Lord, we say thank you, Lord, for your amazing experience already. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. Now, God, send on your Lord to the midst of knees, open the minds, hearts, ears, and people let them really receive the word. God, we think stop the flow. You will be able to change me. Say, I'm a sinner. That's right, the preach. I'm a sinner. Say, with your love and grace, God, you preach. And you will find it here. We're coming here. Come now, God. Jesus' name we pray. Live your heart and say amen. amen. No need to worry. I really don't know why I'm being led uh, to start this sermon off like this. Uh, but for some strange reason, I feel as if there is someone under the sound of my voice who is extremely worried about something or someone. Uh, worried about what they're going to do. Worried about what they're going to say. Worried about how it's going to turn out. Worried about how it's going to pan out. Lord, I know what your word says, but I'm still worried. Uh, you do look at me straight. So you want to hear right now, but I don't care how much you just worship and praise God. All of us in here who are children, blood born Christians of God, there are seasons of our life, look at me, where all we do is just worry. Uh, we're worried about what the enemy is going to do next. We're worried about what kind of struggles am I going to face next week. Uh, we're worried about how is this month going to pan out different from last month. I, I, I know what God says, Pastor. I know what you say God will do. I believe that God is not a man that he should lie, but truth and be, 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 be told. I am still worried. Because I'm looking at my situation and I'm trying to believe in my favor. My situation is telling me something different. Come, come here. What do you do when your situation is talking louder than your faith? What, 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 who, whose report will you believe? Uh, when, when, when it seems like all I'm seeing is devastation, calamity, disappointment, and frustration, and you tell me not to worry. I'm talking to some of you here right now who have reached a certain mature level in God where you said, Pastor, I've learned that even though sometimes the spirit of worry tries to rise up in my mind and in my spirit, I keep on remembering and playing back all the things that God has already done. Uh, he, he never does anything else for me. He's already done enough. And you can sit there like Alice in Wonderland or you want to. I need some real people in the building to begin to think back on your life and see, Lord, I don't know how you deliver me from all that mess I was in. I don't know how you allow me to walk away from the accident with no scratches on my body. I don't understand how in the hand and sheen you allow me to be unemployed but all my bills are paid. I still went shopping. I still look good. I need somebody here to thank God Right now, Thank I'm you, not going to come in here and worry about what's happening in my life. I'm going to trust God and believe that God will not leave me by myself. Y'all look at me strange in here now. I need my son right now to thank God right now. I'm not going to worry. That's too stupid. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. No, no, no need to worry when God owns the cattle, owns the cows, and hills. No need to worry when He was wounded for my transgressions. He was cruel to my iniquity and by His heart. I'm already healed. I need somebody here.
don't trust you. When you worry, you tell God, I know you're God, but I just don't believe it. I, I believe that you can allow my car not to explode when I start taking this. But I don't believe you can take care of my child who's not acting right. We are conditional, watch it now, when it comes to our relationship with God. And God is saying, I cannot increase your life because all you're doing is worrying. Here we go. Whenever you are caught and stuck in part in the spirit of worrying, watch me now, you are now uh, handicapping your faith. Because you don't trust God beyond what you see. And your worrying, here we go, will end up making you make decisions you should not make. Don't talk to me. Let, 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 let's be honest. Let's be honest. When you were worrying, you did some things you shouldn't have did. Uh, when you're worrying, you ask some people for money. You know you shouldn't have asked them for no more money. But when you were worrying, you were stressed out about the situation. And God came. Your worrying puts you in a state of demonic vulnerability. Because now you are Open yourself to something that I have not created you to do. Um, I'm God. Control the heavens and the earth. When I cough, the wind blows. I, I, put, I put little green jackets on every blade of grass. And every grass doesn't grow the same way because I made it like that. It's in the house. The ocean never, never comes above land unless I command it to. I'm God. I'm, I'm, I, I, I sprinkle stars in the atmosphere and they never collide. I, I put planets in their rightful place and baptize them with the global mist. I'm, I'm God. I, I, I allow it to rain. And sunshine at the same time. Oh, yeah. I'm gone. I, I, I can allow you to go into the doctor's office and they find cancer, and you go back for a follow up, and there's nothing there. And if I'm gone, that means there's nothing in the world that's going on in your life that I can't fix. And that's why, that's why, that's why at every service, that's why I don't care what's going on with every service. I always make sure I give you an opportunity to pray God. And for those of you here now who are broken, busted, and disgusted and need God to do a miracle, you don't even understand that when you pray to God, you actually go to the church pastor place. You say, I come to make the withdrawal, and I'm paying for it with my praise. I go with all your life and talk to your neighbor. Is there anybody here who wants to pay God? Because we're, we're all familiar with the scripture, I know what I'm against me, so far. 